everyone, this is Amy Astro here and I have a great video planned for you all today. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new Astro related content. Now recently I needed to purchase a new set of narrowband filters. And if figuring out which size and connection was not already enough, you also need to know which band pass you need. Did I want a six nanometers or did I want a 12 nanometer and why? So today we will talk about my deep dive into narrow band filters. We all know that with a mono camera, we need filters for color. We need narrowband filters to create some of the most dramatic images, such as the Horsehead Nebula where we needed the H-alpha filter, or to create the beautiful blue and gold images with the Hubble palette. But why? Why do we need them? Well. Narrowband filters are designed to capture a very specific wavelength of light. And they only capture a very small part of the spectrum. Narrowband is said to have narrow band passes, hence the name narrowband. The band pass is how much of the spectrum the filters allow to pass. And this is measured in nanometers or N. M for short. The entire visual spectrum runs approximately from a wavelength of about 400 nanometers, which is blue, to 700 nanometers, which is red. So typically an RGB filter might have a band pass of about 100 nanometers. In contrast, a typical narrowband filter has a band pass of just three to five nanometers, very narrow. So let's talk about the classes of celestial objects there are so we can understand what we are imaging scientifically speaking. We have emission nebula, we have reflection nebulae, and we have planetary nebulae. And what all of these have in common is they're composed of gases and these gases are emitting light. And emission nebulae emits their own light. Okay, an example of that would be like the Orion Nebula or the Lagoon Nebula. And Reflection Nebula, they shine by reflecting starlight. And an example of this type of nebulosity is what's around the Pleiades. Now, Reflection Nebulae are not really suited well for narrowband images. Trust me, I have tried this. That blue nebulosity that you see around the Pleiades is not oxygen three, okay? So planetary nebulae, they are typically considered a separate class of objects since they represent a different phenomena. They're um, star death instead of star birth. And for our cameras, they could also be considered an emission nebulae, all right? And supernova remnants also fall into this category. An example of that would be like the Ring Nebula, um, the Veil Nebula, and the Crab Nebula. The most common emission lines are in nebulas are hydrogen and oxygen. And other elements like sulfur and nitrogen also create some prominent lines. Now, common filters to image with are hydrogen alpha, also known as HA or H alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur two. Now, some folks like to expand this to include the hydrogen beta and the nitrogen two filters. Now, the advantage of narrowband imaging is the ability to detect more detail and the ability to image from a light polluted area since filters don't pass the light emitted from most types of streetlights 
or even moonlight. So they're great to use on a moonlit night. Um, narrow band filters also isolate the light given off by specific gases. Narrow band filters typically have band passes in the range of three to five nanometers, as we said earlier, and a six nanometer H alpha filter band pass was expanded to allow the use of some popular fast focal ratio telescopes. At a fast focal ratio, narrow band filters shift off band, okay? Meaning that they try to shift away from the wavelength they are designed to capture. And this effect is a significant decrease in this overall sensitivity of it. And a wider band pass allows the required emission lines to remain within the filter's highest transmission zone, even if it has shifted slightly. Now for very fast systems, even wider band pass is required. Now for telescopes faster than an F4, a 10 to 12 nanometer band pass is required. And so in conclusion, it is that if you have a typical F7 telescope and you live in a light polluted area, a six nanometer filter is your best option. Now, if you have a very fast telescope, F4 or faster, a higher band pass will work better for you, like a 10 to 12 nanometer filter. Now, my first set of narrowband filters, they're six nanometers and they're paired great with my Explorer Scientific ED-102. It's an F7 telescope and I was living in a Bortle 67 skies. My new skies are Bortle 4 and since I still use the same telescope, I'll stay with the six nanometer filters. But if you have like a Celestron Rasa with an F4 aperture and a dark sky, check out a 10 to 12 nanometer filter set. So I hope this clarifies a few things for you when you're selecting your filters. If you want to read more on the subject, check out Starzona's website. They have a lot of great information there. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video below. Also follow me over there on Patreon for a little something extra and to help support me creating more videos for you. I appreciate all of y'all. I really, really do. Now, on a fun note, my dreams of an observatory are coming just a little bit closer. I have tree removal scheduled in a couple weeks and my next phase will be to decide the perfect location in that general area and to, well, I gotta level the ground out. Slow but sure, but things are happening. I am so, so excited. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'm wishing you guys some great health, clear skies, and remember, I love all of y'all. Goodbye, y'all.